Hi, it's Amanda. Welcome to my channel. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a just product stash video where I walked through all the brands that I have on my shelf to show you what's coming up in my B.O.B. 123 series and what I have covered in the past. On making that video, I thought about the fact that I am very um, protective of my hair products. There are a lot of products in my stash that I am probably never going to get to again before they go bad because I've already finished them in my series. I'm not going to be doing them in a wash day favorites and they're just sitting there. But for one reason or another, I haven't been willing to give those products to my sister or my mother. They can try them, but don't finish my products. And I think the problem is I need to let go and make room for more products. There are so many other brands that I have my eye on and I actually don't have that much space left on my shelf. So I need to purge. And I feel like in order to purge, I need to at least let you know what's in my stash. And also I am now 36 weeks into my B.O.B. 123 series. I think I'm on my 12th brand right now. Three weeks of brand, 12 times three. So I also thought it would be interesting to, even though I haven't reviewed all of these products, go back, walk through the actual leave-in conditioners that I have and tell you my thoughts on them or let you know if they're gonna be coming up in my series. And before I continue, sorry, my B.O.B. 123 series is my black owned brands only series. I do three wash day reviews over three weeks. So that's three different styles. I offer three company and or founder facts per video and I have been doing it for the last 36 weeks or so. Right now I'm reviewing Shebe USA. My second review for that brand is coming out next week at the time of this recording. This recording is probably gonna go up in another couple of weeks and I'm doing a giveaway, but again, that giveaway is also gonna be closed by the time I'm done with that. So just keep looking out because I'm gonna be trying to do more giveaways on my channel. My point being, I'm very far removed from, for instance, like the first brand that I reviewed. So where I do have products left, I'm gonna let you know, you know, 16 weeks later, do I remember this product? Was there anything that stood out? Is it one of my favorites? Because I think that's a good indication. If I remember a product that I reviewed 16 weeks ago, that means something, something either good or bad. But I'm gonna show you all the leave-ins I have in my collection and therefore give myself permission to give them away or finish them off and make room for more. These are in no particular order, so I'm just going to pick them up. Oof. I think there are 19 leave-in conditioners here. And when I say leave-in conditioner, I left out like three and four and one stylers. I left out anything that called itself a styler. I left out butters, creams. This is just leave-in conditioners. Some of them will be really quick, like this one, because I haven't reviewed it yet. This is the Main Crush Curls on the Rocks leave-in. I will be getting to Main Crush soon. I don't know when specifically, but this is something coming down the pipeline. Next up, another very quick one. I haven't used it yet. This is the Chocolate Kinks and Curls Pineapple Colada Hair Milk. I did include my hair milks in with leave-in conditioners because I see them as the same sort of thing. And I only have like two milks or one. This might be the only one. I'm also gonna be reviewing this brand coming up in my series. Okay, there's a lot I haven't used. This is Sorenzo Beauty, the avocado and honey leave-in conditioner. The Cryo Botanicals Low Porosity Leave-In Conditioner, and this is protein-free. It is May right now, I think it's May 2nd or May 3rd, and I probably used Cryo Botanicals in July of last year. That being said, I do remember the whole collection being really good, but I don't remember anything about the leave-in. I am going to be doing three weeks of reviews for Cryo Botanicals as well, so I'm just as interested as you might be as to what my thoughts are on this, because I honestly just don't remember individually. Mish Lavish Leave-In Conditioner, and the first one I could actually say something about. So from the beginning, the Mish Indulge, I think that's the name of the deep conditioner, I didn't particularly like it. It felt good putting it in my hair, but as soon as I rinsed it out, it felt okay. And then I pretty much lost moisture a day or two later. And that would be the deep conditioner, then following up with the leave-in, and then her twisting cream. So those three products in combination just didn't give me the moisture. And I can retain moisture for seven days. So when I lose it in one or two days, I know that those products don't work for me. That being said, very recently I reviewed the Mish Strengthen Deep Conditioner and I thought it was great. It was very moisturizing both as I was putting it in, after I rinsed it out, and I felt like it was a really good foundation, but I still feel like the Lavish Leave-In Conditioner didn't do a good job of enhancing anything that the Deep Conditioner had done. And I just wasn't impressed with it. As I was putting it on my hair, I don't remember being particularly 
happy about the way that it was making my hair feel. So I'll maintain that I don't particularly like the Mish, let me call it the signature collection because it was her first one. I know she now has two different collections. She has the Bounce and then she just came out with another one with the, including a clarifying shampoo. I like the Mish Strengthen. I don't like the, the other products and I don't particularly like this leave-in conditioner. It smells fantastic, but it didn't feel fantastic in my hair. Next up, this is the Yamini Essentials Genie in a Bottle. And I have reviewed this in my B.O.B. 123 series. This was one of the first few brands that I did. I really like this leave-in conditioner. My only gripe with it is that the pump doesn't work. And while that has nothing to do with the product, it's why I don't reach for it. But I thought this was a really good leave-in conditioner. It had a lot of slip. And I remember really liking it, even though I reviewed it several months ago and I've used so many products since then. And just check out the review if you want to get my real-time, at-the-time, thoughts on this product, but yes, I definitely liked it, but I don't reach for it because I don't like having to, like, you know. I do really like the Whips uh, Flaxseed Souffle, also from Yamini Essentials, but maybe I'll do another styling cream uh, video if you think you would like that. Let me know in the comments section if you want me to continue with this as a series and go through all of my creams and my butters and my deep conditioners and my shampoos. I have already released, or I will be releasing, an oils video, so... Let me know if you'd like me to continue with the rest of my of my products. This is the Azure Beauty Bayomint Leave-In Conditioning Styler. So I used this in the last week of my dual wash day series on one half of my head, but I mixed up the Honey's Handmade and the Azure Beauty, so I never really got a full conclusion on that wash day. My dual wash day series was a series I did last year, and I pitted all the products in my collection at the time against each other, so I did wash days where I would do half of one set of products, half of another. I would wear my hair, because I always do, because it's attached to me, for an entire week. And at the end of the week, I would choose a winner based on how my hair held up throughout the week. I had eight rounds, I believe, and in the last round was Adjua Beauty and the Honey's Handmade Melba's Kitchen Collection, but I mixed up the products, so I never really had a, a, a true winner there. I haven't used this brand since then, so this will be coming up in my B.O.B. 123 series. I honestly don't remember how this, how this felt in my hair. Earthborn Organics Aloe Leave-In Conditioner. This is one of my favorite brands right now, Earthborn Organics, and the Aloe Leave-In Conditioner is one of my favorite leave-in conditioners. It struck me at how much slip it had. It felt really good in my hair. I just thought it was a really, really good foundation for her styling products. I did review this recently in my B.O.B. 123 series, so you can check out my review on that as well. And I do have a coupon code for this brand. It's Amanda Krambus if you want 20% off. Also, by the way, you can check out uptightpearls.com. That's my website. If you go to the brands and deals page, I do have coupon codes for a lot of the brands in my stash. I am adding them on that page whenever I get new coupon codes. This is the Taipei Naturals Triple Butter Leave-In Conditioner. I do remember really liking this as well. I thought it had a good amount of slip and I think it did a very good job as a leave-in conditioner because I followed up with the Curls La Vie, which is just a styling creamy, but it's a gel and I don't feel like it added moisture. Normally I like to have a either a butter or a cream to put on top of a leave-in conditioner unless I'm using like a three-in-one or a four-in-one. But I think that given I was not able to follow up with a moisturizing product, after putting this in, I think it did a good job of holding the moisture for the next few days. And on application, it felt really good. Next up is the Melba's Hair Stuffing Decadent Daily Moisturizer. So I used this, it would have been also back in July when I was doing my dual wash day series. The Melba's Kitchen Collection did end up winning like four or maybe even five rounds of my eight round series. I don't remember this being a particularly good standout. I think just the whole collection worked really well in my hair. And at the time, the Omega-3 Fatty Acid Deep Penetrating Hair Mask, I think that's what it's called, was my favorite deep conditioner. And I was just raving about that the whole time that I was doing the reviews. I don't remember feeling much about the Daily Moisturizer. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing Honey's Handmade in my B.O.B. 123 series. I may as well, might as well because I have a good number of products. Some of them I haven't even used, but it's, it's TBD whether I'm gonna do that. And maybe you could check out my dual wash day series if you want a more specific um, review of this because I honestly don't remember, but that's the whole point of this video. Do I remember even though I used it like eight months ago? Some of them I remember, some of them I don't. So this was not a standout for me. 
So this is the only three-in-one styler that I'm gonna allow into the video. And I guess you could say that I'm potentially cheating, but it's my video, I make the rules, so I'm, I'm bringing it in. And the only reason I'm doing that is because this is actually called a leave-in, whereas the other ones are more called like the classy hair, the classy curl definer, that is actually marketed as a three-in-one, and then the one-and-done from curls and potions, that also is like a three or a four-in-one, whereas this is marketed as a leave-in conditioner. <laughs> now that I'm done justifying my decision, this is the Bo Peep Luxuries Radiant. The Bo Peep Luxuries wash day for me was just an amazing healing and just, just, just a great <laughs> overall wash day. So I would say all of the items collectively in that wash day were fantastic. My hair felt like this like next level, like reparative blessed feeling after using the Radiant because I use this as my styling product and I feel like it has healing properties in addition to just making your hair feel really, really soft. But in addition to that, I was also able to maintain definition for seven days. And also I love this line because of the ingredient list. It's an Ayurvedic herb focused ingredient list. I just love all of her products. Next up is the Camille Rose Honey Hydrate. I reviewed Camille Rose as the first brand in my B.O.B. 123 series. So yeah, about 36 weeks ago, I remember this product. I used this in weeks two and three of my review because the first week I had the, I think it was a milk and it just didn't do anything with my hair, but I got this and my feelings about Camille Rose changed. I have been finding that the feedback on this is very polarized. A lot of people love it. A lot of people hate it. No one seems to be okay on it. It was just one of the most moisturizing products that I had put on my hair at the time. And even now, I feel like it still would stand out as one of the most moisturizing. And the cool thing about this product, sorry, I just lost my light. The standout characteristic of this is that it's heat activating. It's really weird that they don't mention that anywhere on the packaging because it's it's unique and it's, it's a nice feature, which is really great for low porosity hair because low porosity hair is supposed to apply heat when you're applying products because it opens your cuticles that are otherwise normally laying flat and it allows the moisture to penetrate. The Camille Rose products for me in general are incredibly moisturizing. The Deep Sea Algae Renew Deep Conditioner became a close second and might have actually surpassed that Honey's Handmade one, but that the Almond Jai, I don't remember the, pro the name of the other product that I'm thinking of right now, but that was one of the most moisturizing wash days that I had, but I don't maintain any curl definition with Camille Rose. Like I lose the curl definition like within the same day. That's not okay for me, but I still think that these are really great nourishing products. My hair still felt great. It's just that it had no definition and there's so many product collections that I could use that will maintain the definition and the moisture. So I will tend towards those, but I would still use like the deep conditioner. I would still use the honey hydrate as a leave-in conditioner, but then I would use a different styling product. I just haven't tested like that. Next up is a melanin multi-use softening leave-in conditioner. This was the second brand that I reviewed in my B.O.B. 123 series. That being said, I don't actually use this as a leave-in conditioner, so it should or should not be in this video. But anyway, I use this as a pre-poo, although I did a recent video and I prefer the Camellia conditioning mask as a pre-poo. I still use this though because I prefer the pump and I prefer that it is a large size. I feel like I'm gonna finish this up very quickly if I was to just use it as a pre-poo because it's a smaller tub. Anyway, I use this as a pre-poo, but when I was reviewing it in my BLB 123 series, I use this for my, what I like to call my one shower wash days because I literally only need to take one shower because I don't have to rinse out the deep conditioner. This also serves as a deep conditioner to leave in. So that is what I did. I applied it as a deep conditioner I went under heat, I didn't rinse it out, and I also didn't reapply it, I don't think. And then I followed it up with the Melanin Hair Care Twisty Elongating Style Cream. Those were three really good wash days, good maintenance of definition, good maintenance of moisture, and that's what you could ask for with dry type four hair. And I guess technically I did use it as a leave-in conditioner because I didn't put on a different leave-in conditioner, so, you know. I reviewed this very recently. This is the Sultanicals Not Sauce Coil Detangler. I think leave-ins and detanglers, pretty much the same thing, so that's why it's in the in the video. This is the most slip that I've ever gotten from a product. Hands down. Um, excuse me, mommy. You just almost call me, almost call me ma'am. So, quickly. I, I really know. want to have a muffin from a muffin place, <sighs> and I want my Jasmine to get it. She said she would get it only if my mom. What are you gonna eat for me? Um. 
I'll read a pill. Listen. Okay. Okay. Hi, camera. Most slip I have ever gotten from a product. I love Sultanicals products. I think their ingredient lists are fantastic, and I'm all about the ingredients. Again, check out uptightcurls.com. And there's not much more to say on this. She also has the <clears throat> Marula Muru Moisture Guru. This was a really great product as well, but I think this one did better with the slip and the moisture. For that reason only, I would say that this is better than this, but this also on its own is a fantastic product. Now we have the Garden of Bloom Mulch Obliged Leave-In Styling Cream. This is called Styling Cream, but it also says leave-in, so I'm treating it as a leave-in, and I have not reviewed it yet. This is from Garden of Bloom. Bell and Bloom is a fellow YouTuber. She makes Ayurvedic products as well. She sent me these to review and I'm really excited to get to it. I just haven't done it yet in my series, but I will be reviewing this over three weeks. Next up is the Shea Bay USA Leave-In Conditioner. As I mentioned earlier, this is the brand that I am currently reviewing. And it's hard to say right now what I think of this as a standalone product, only because the Ambunu Deep Conditioner that I used right before this was so amazing. And I retained so much slip and moisture retention after I rinsed it out that putting this in, I don't think it could have done much more, but it didn't take away the slip. I think it's, it's good. And I know a lot of people love this product. So you know what? The Ambunu Deep Conditioner also doubles as a leave-in. So let's bring this into the, into the video. So this may have taken my top spot as my favorite deep conditioner. I think the two of these, I used them together last week. I maintained moisture and definition, but I would attribute that to the styling butter for seven days. So I think this is a fantastic leave-in and deep conditioner. I'd only use it in my first week. I didn't use it in my second week because I decided to roll this over just like I do with the melanin leave-in conditioner. I use this as a deep conditioner to leave in and I applied so much of it, there was no room for this product. But the first time I used it, it had good slip. It's moisturizing, but it's kind of hard for me to really articulate what I think about it just because I was still kind of flying high from using this product. Oh, and because I mentioned my coupon code earlier, I do have a coupon code for this brand as well. It's Uptight Curls for 15% off. Next up is the Regia Sweet Naturals Aloe Hibiscus Leave-In Conditioner. I unfortunately don't really remember this product. I would have to take a look at my review and I guess you can too. I did review this over three weeks. It was probably back in October. I didn't throw this out even though it's almost done. So I think I did really like it at the time. It's just unfortunately really hard for me to remember. So it was not a standout. It also would have stood out to me if I didn't like, but I don't remember if it was particularly moisturizing or if it was particularly detangling. So apologies on that. I'm gonna have to go back and look at my review because I don't remember. Last up is the Fab Hair International Moisture Mist Leave-In Conditioning Spray. I am actually gonna be reviewing this brand next. They don't have wash day products, so I'm gonna be using, I'm not sure what shampoo, and I'm gonna be reviewing the Sultanicals Hibiscus Healer Healthy Scalp Mask. If you take a look at my Sultanicals week one review, you'll understand why I'm gonna be reviewing it, or my week two review, that, that, yeah. I have styling products from this brand. I will be reviewing them next. I'm a little bit nervous when it comes to using leave-in conditioning sprays, but I did reach out to the company to confirm, like for my dry type four hair, you're telling me I'm gonna spray this thing that looks like water and, and gel into my hair and it's actually gonna moisturize it? And she said yes. So this along with the styling products that I have, I hope work out really well because I'm gonna be reviewing them over three weeks. More to come on this one. Those are all of my leave-in conditioners that I have left. I'm jumping back in with a late edition. We have the Bo Peep Luxuries Joy. This is her latest line. It is for kids and for people with sensitive scalps. I have been using this on Aiden and Layla's hair since this collection dropped, and it has transformed Layla's hair. It's still a little bit wild. I'm not totally sure how to take care of it yet, but I am working on it. And these are the only products that have consistently, over a period of time, done right by her hair, and it is just three products. So I use the Joy Shampoo, the Joy Conditioner, and the Joy Detangling Leave-In. But as I said, it's not just for kids, it's for people with sensitive scalps as well. I haven't yet used it on my own hair. I have to configure a wash day where I bring these three products in because I deep condition. I'm not gonna use the conditioner only. I can also just, I guess, do it with the regular Aria or the um, Abundance Sia deep conditioners that are from Bo Peep as well. I just haven't done that yet. I did record a full wash day with Aiden using the three products, but I'm not an expert at creating children's wash day videos. It was quite a struggle and I don't actually think there's any footage that I can 
form into a video. So, and the thing I love about these products, someone also mentioned this in a comment section on a recent video that they like it when Ayurvedic products or, or products that boast that they have all natural ingredients and they have a lot of like herbs and spices and all and what have you in their products. These products are all some variation of brown. There is no um, filler or anything in there that is making it look unauthentically white. This is what it looks like. And it's not scented with fragrance. Aiden doesn't like the smell of the shampoo. I'm fine with it as an adult, but the leave-in conditioner and the conditioner both smell naturally good. There have been a few products, a very small amount of products that I did end up using up during my three weeks of reviews. And I'm not gonna call those out because they're no longer in my stash and this is a stash video. But I am gonna mention this because I am gonna be doing a live with the Eco Slay founder, Adria Marshall. She also has one of those deep conditioners to leave-ins that I use the buttercream deep conditioner. The first week I used it and I rinsed it out, not knowing that it could double as a leave-in conditioner. And then I followed up with just the Jello shot because I didn't have a leave-in conditioner from the brand. So the next week I did use it as a deep conditioner to leave-in and I had moisture for seven days. Whereas the first week I had moisture for a few days, but to be fair, I used a deep conditioner, I rinsed it out and then I put in a gel. So I wasn't really expecting much. That brings me to the end of this video. If you have used any of these leave-in conditioners, if any of these brands are exciting to you, again, the usual, if anything is in your queue, I'd love to hear your thoughts below. And also let me know if you'd like me to continue this series to go through the butters in my stash, the deep conditioners and the shampoos. I either will or have already put out an oils video. Thank you for watching. If you like my channel and haven't done so already, please consider subscribing, like, comment, and share, and I will talk to you in my next one. Thanks and have a good one.